here at SEMA is with the Ring Brothers to find out what they have come up with and how they've modified every panel, come up with some crazy modification to every car they work on. And this year, they built a car called Diversion. So I'm with Mike Ring, and Mike, tell me what you made. Well, we made a 70 Camaro by Bobby Charvini. It's a second gen Camaro, and as you know, we're kind of Ford guys, so it's it's definitely a spin that we've, we've not even thought of before it came here. I thought before you guys told me you're not going to do anything but Fords anymore, <laughs> yeah. so I'm a little tossed again. Uh, we'll do whatever comes in the door. <laughs> <laughs> what was the motivation for this particular car? They brought us a car that they had a rendering and they had done, and, and uh, Somebody started the car, and uh, we kind of restarted it. I think maybe that's why it's called diversion. It kind of went from one direction to another. Oh. And, uh, yeah, we started out, you know, as most of them, just kind of a simpler build, and it kind of morphed into more than what maybe they or we expected it to become. So that's usually what happens yeah, at your shop. It does. Um, okay, so based on the rendering that they brought to you and what you turned it into, what kind of modifications did you make? Uh, the car was going to be yellow with black stripes, so pretty much everything. <laughs> everything changed. <laughs> yeah. How about the driveline? Driveline, they it's they started, it had a three-link in it, we just kind of cleaned it up. Um, it's got a, a DSC front sub in it, and it's got an LS7 Mass Motorsports LS7 with a Bowler 5-speed in it. Now, I know most of the time when people bring their cars to SEMA, they're not running or not driving. Have you guys experienced this one yet? Uh, just just down the street a few times. Okay, it's, how's it's it handle? strong. Good. I mean, can't, I'll be honest, we haven't really laid it to the wood too much. But, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's been good the little um, bit we've had it. So you guys are known for, uh, you, what, how many CNC machines do you have in your shop, first of all? Well, actually, we we had five, but we actually finally got Todd to purchase them from him so we could make room to get him out. So he still he still does all our work, but he's actually moved out of the shop because we just don't have room anymore. Wow. So with five CNC machines, I imagine there's not too many runs to the park store for things. You guys just come up with crazy ideas and make them. Yeah, but it gets, it gets so expensive. That, and, you know, it's it seems like that's the trend is, is machining everything. And we're trying to, I don't know, we're trying to spin it another way again where maybe we're, we're trying to go away a little bit from the machining because... It's becoming popular. We're trying to always move another direction, you know, when, when we see the masses going one way. So we'll see what that what comes from that. What kind of parts did uh, the Ring Brothers put on this car? Um, on this car, hinges, uh, door handles. Uh, we actually made a door hinge for this car because if anybody knows anything about these second-gen cars, uh, the hinges just, they do not... They can't take the weight. There's too okay. much weight in these doors from the factory. The hinges won't last. Mm -hmm. And then you add some Dynamat or some soundproofing in these cars, and they right. tear the hinges right off them. So uh, we're right now building hinges for these second-gen cars, and we think it's probably one of our best products ever because it's such a needed product. And if somebody wants to get hinges or door handles and other uh, Ring Brothers products, where do they get them from? Uh, Ringbrothers.com, our okay. website, or Summit, or Motor State. Or you know, there's a lot of different outlets for us. I think you just Google Ring Brothers and you can find an outlet somewhere. Cool. Um, I know you modify every panel. Start walking me through the car and tell me what's been changed on this car. You know, not knowing this car like I probably should as far as, because it is a Camaro, uh, mm -hmm. starting with the roof, we, uh, we you know, flush them out in the glass is kind of something we've been doing for a while. Right. We made a roof spoiler off the top, okay. um, put a brake light in there. Pretty much the whole back of the car we fab. It's very similar, used to stock lights, but uh, the whole back panel's been changed. The belly pan that we added, the rear, uh, what we would call diffuser, the, uh, uh, the spoiler is really different, and one's operational center spoiler on it. Uh -huh. um, wheel, wheel wells have been manipulated to fit pretty big tires. We've got a 13 inch wheel in the back, and a 11 inch wheel in the front. Okay. With 315s up front. Um, now you're in the BASF booth, and uh, what products did you use on this car? And tell me some of the techniques you used for that paint line. Well, this was our first. We we got the memo. No no car in this booth would be here without water. So oh. this is a, obviously where we want to be. We're actually converting now to water our whole setup. And, okay. And we're excited. We've been we've been Diamond guys for over 20 years. 
So it was, it's a big, but I'm telling you, the Glazer line is just amazing. The way the metallics hang right now, and you can see it, it's really funny. If you go in a booth with the water and you're, you're spraying it, you turn the lights off, and you just go in there with a flashlight, you see the fine metallics in the air. It's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. It's This stuff hangs in the air, and when it settles, they stand. Like, normal metallics kind of lay. When they tell you that, you don't you don't understand, but yeah. you visually see it. And then when you clear it, mm -hmm. it comes alive. It's a, it's a whole nother animal and, and much better product. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm not the expert on water, but I tell you right now, it's it's going to be an easy change, and it's, it's been a great one. It's, That's really good really, to know. Well, the bigger question we have is, are you going to admit to having any problems with the build? Did it was something like totally stump uh, you and this, uh, you threw the wrenches and you got all mad? We, every car is that way. <laughs> I, I wish more builders would talk about it. I because, do too. I'm trying to learn from yeah, the problems. I mean, God, I, I, I could write a book on the problems we've had. And, and I know everybody's in the same boat. It's um, These cars, you do not bolt together and think you have a Honda. I mean, <laughs> It takes a lot of months of tweaking, mm -hmm. um, and you know, you, you're, you're, you do this too. You build one part, and you don't think it affects you until the last day putting a hood on, like the top of this, <laughs> we change, and it's, yeah. until they're running, driving, and you shut the hood a few times when you drove it, and you don't, right. you look, lift it up, and there's no rub marks. You wait for the vibrations yeah. to shake everything. I mean, it's, and nobody's perfect. No. Um, now, how about um, the interior of the car? What kind of modifications did you make in there? Uh, everything. Started yeah. with the dash. Okay. Built our own dash. Wanted to keep it very much Camaro. Very, uh -huh. You know, even the door panels, to, uh, the seats. The seats we made low back because 70 Camaro to me is what I love about them is the, sh the short headrests in those cars. Okay. And I really wanted to stick with that. Or, I don't mean to say me. We as, a, we as a group of people. Mike, you did it again. The Ring Brothers built another beauty. But we really appreciate that you guys continue to try something new. And to, I know you really like them Fords, but we really appreciate you showing this to us today. And we hope you have a good SEMA show. Well, thanks. And I uh, hope we get to see this one out on the track. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Good to see you.